e shalomak yom wa akwath kal halal yahawa bahasam yahawa sai bahasam rahaha kwadash yahawa is the true name of the heavenly father who the world through ignorance calls god jehovah or yahweh yahawa in the ancient palu hebrew means he exists or he to be yahawa sai in the ancient palu hebrew means he saves he delivers who the world through ignorance calls Jesus Christ, Yeshua, or Yahuwah. Yahweh, Wa Yahweh Shai, are so called black men, according to the law and the testimony of the Holy Scriptures. And I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the man that taught me the 100% truth according to the Holy Scriptures. And shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered amongst the heathen in these last days. And in these last days, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are the true Hebrew Israelites. And you make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Judah being the main tribe of the southern kingdom. And Ephraim, which is you so-called Latinos, you so-called Hispanics, you are the main tribe or the main head of the northern kingdom pursuing to the prophecies of ezekiel chapter 37 revelation chapter 7 revelation chapter 14 and various other prophecies and today's lesson i pray is edifying is the word of the day which is devout okay devout which means someone deeply who is sincere and dedicated to the truth. And the inspiration of this lesson came from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10 and verse 1. Again, I pray this lesson is edifying to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Now, Cornelius is an example of of your brothers and sisters who are listening to this lesson okay cornelius he was uh, pretty much the first israelite foreigner or the first uh, gentile hellenized israelite who was converted into the truth okay who came into the truth okay and understood who he was okay you know in the spirit you see because you know in the ancient days during the time of yahweh shai and the apostles a lot of our people pursuing to the prophecies and the curses in Deuteronomy 28 and Jeremiah the 17th chapter. As a people, we lost our heritage. We lost our nationality. And that's what made us Gentiles. That's what made us Hellenized. We started following the ways of, you know, the, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the, the Grecians, the Romans. Okay. We started eating pork, you know, getting tattoos, shaving our beard, committing adultery. You know, uh, working out naked at the gym. These are examples of uh, being a Gentile, okay, not having a, you know, your true power. But Cornelius, okay, which I believe, when you go into the name Cornelius, if I'm not mistaken, it actually means horn, okay, and horn is uh, symbolic to a uh, power. It says a, uh, a, Roman, a Roman centurion of a horn. You see that? A Roman centurion of the Italian cohort station in Caesarea who converted to Christianity. Now, Christianity, that goes into what? Religion. But if you are, you are a studious brother and sister, you'll come into the understanding that this is not a religion. Because anybody can join a religion. It can be a Catholic one day and next the next day you can convert to Islam or, or Buddhism, okay? And in other words, Cornelius, he actually converted to his true nationality, okay? Which means what? He converted back to being a, a Hebrew Israelite, okay? He, un he understood who he was through what? Through the gospel, through the good news, okay? And that's what also made him a Christian. A Christian means someone that's anointed, anointed with what? With the oil, Okay, with the oil of gladness, because when you come into this truth, matter of fact, let me get a precept. 
when you come into this truth or the truth, which is you start getting an anointing, okay, with the oil of gladness. And the oil being symbolic to gladness is when it, you know, this truth becomes sweet. Okay, you know you're an Israelite. Okay, you know the salute, you know, a Yahweh Shemel Shai Barakata or Atham. You know, you know the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know that you're from the tribe of uh, Ephraim or Gad, Zebulon or Issachar, so on and so forth. Okay, that's the sweet part. This is Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hatest iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, which, you know, it means uh, power, which is the title of Yahweh, hath anointed you with the oil of gladness. You see that? With the oil of gladness. So when you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you came into your true nationality, you received what? The oil of gladness. And that's where you get the word, okay, anointed. When you're anointed with, uh, with the oil, man, okay, you're anointed with the truth above thy fellows now this uh context that's actually speaking about yahweh shai but because of yahweh shai in these last days we have woken up to our true nationality and that's what made makes us brothers and sisters in these last days devout okay this is how you pronounce the word devout devout which means having or showing deep religious now again there's not a religion okay because uh religion okay when you actually break that word down it means to hold back okay it holds you back from your true okay from your true power okay this is not catholic this is not christianity or uh, you know buddhism okay scientology or you know these various religions which i believe there's over seven thousand religious religions worldwide but it's a feeling or commitment you see devoted spiritual dedicated god-fearing a God fearing means what? Fear the Lord. And how do you feel the Lord? A you gotta be in your best behavior. Okay, you have you have to be well conducted. You gotta be mature. It says dedicated, loyal. When you come into this truth, you gotta be loyal, faithful, passionate. Yeah, there's no half stepping when you come into this truth. Okay. You don't just uh you know read once a week, <laughs> you know, I'm about to go read once a month. You know what? Today I ain't gonna uh, listen to no lessons. Okay, I'm about to take a year off, man. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. You can't be half stepping in this truth. Once you come into the sweet part of being a, a Hebrew Israelite, okay, you gotta come all in. Okay, you gotta be a hundred percent. You know, committed. Okay, if you wanna serve the Heavenly Father, you gotta serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Now back to the point of the lesson, Acts chapter ten and verse one. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, there's a point. A devout man. You see that? A devout man. And that's the point of this lesson. The word devout. And one that feared Yahweh with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. And pray to Yahweh always. Now, the word devout, that's what I want to focus on in this lesson. It means what? The Greek word for devout. Strong's G 2152, you said base. You said base. You said base. It says pious or oh, Dutiful, okay, well, reverent, godly. Now, when you go into the root word, the root word of a uh, devout. Strong's G, 2095, you, 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 which means to be well off, farewell, prosper, acting well. You see that acting well. And when you act well, what's an example in the Old Testament? Being on your best behavior, man. This is 1 Samuel 18 and 14. And David behaved himself wisely, right? You see, David behaved himself well in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. So if you want Yahweh Bashmel Shai to be with you, 
You got to be what? Be on your best behavior. And you got to walk wisely. Uh, going back to Acts chapter 10 and verse 2. And real quick, let me get the other word. I believe it's uh, C C Boa. Strong's G, 4576. Sable. 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 To re revere, to worship. So when you come into this truth and you're a so-called de devout man or a woman of the nation of Israel, you have to worship Yahweh Shmuel Shai and be in your best behavior. You see that to worship. This is Psalms 138 and 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Yeah, so if you're a devout Israelite man or woman, you're going to worship toward the holy temple, which is in the east. And praise the name. Okay, what is the name? Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. For thy truth. Who's the truth? Yahweh Shai. John 14 and 6. And Psalms 118 and 142. Thou hast magnified thy word. Who's the word? Yahweh Shai. Uh, the book of 1 John. Okay. Or John the first chapter. Above all thy name. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai, he sits on the right side of Yahweh. This is the book of Philippians 2 and 10. That the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So if you're a devout Israelite, you're going to bow down, okay, worship Yahweh Shai Shai in sincerity and in truth. This is Exodus 4 and 31 and the law. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord Yahweh Shai Shai has visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worship. You see, they bowed their heads and worship. This is the book of get that real quick. Sirach chapter four and verse seven. Give thyself the love of the congregation and bow thy head to a great man. <laughs> and who is that great man? Ultimately, it's Yahweh Shai. He know, he's known as the King of King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let me get that real quick. This is the book of Revelation 19 and 16. And he hath, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see that? Because Yahweh, he gave what? He gave Yahweh Shai all power and all authority. So when you come to this truth and you understand who you are as, you know, as an Is a Hebrew Israelite, understanding your nationality, you have to re reverence the sun. This is uh, Psalms 95 and 6. Oh, come and let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And who's our Lord? Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai. So again, when you're a devout Israelite, you have to worship and kneel down to, to your creator. Okay. You're not supposed to be worship, worshiping no, no other power, man. Okay. Especially for you brothers in these last days. Hey, you don't supposed to be worshiping no woman. Okay. Because uh, that woman that's known as the, the queen of heaven spirit, man. And Yahweh Shmuel Shai actually gets jealous when you're out there worshiping woman. Okay. So again, verse uh, two, a devout man and one that feared Yahweh with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh always. So I want to get the etymology of the word devout to finish off this uh, lesson says devotion to God which is Yahweh especially in prayer given up by vow devoted sincere you see that so to be devout is to be what sincere let's see if there's any scriptures that go into the word sincere It's the book of Philippians 1 and 10. That ye may approve things that are excellent 
that ye may be sincere and without offense to the day of Hamashiach. Yeah, Matthew 24. And uh, was that 14? He that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. First Peter 22, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. There you go again, the word sincere. Okay, when you come to this truth, man, you got to understand the basics. Okay, you got to understand the curses in Deuteronomy 28 chapter. You know, the, the various prophecies of, you know, what's the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip. You got to understand who the 12 tribes are. You got to understand the uh, the salute of the uh, Hebrew, the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You have to understand, you know, uh, you know the, the Ten Commandments, you know, the basics, man. Okay, um, there's a very a wise quote of the uh, one of the uh, beloved elders apostles. Okay, and I believe that those uh, those quotes that you know they speak about in these last days they go back to their teachers. I believe it was Abba Bivens who once said, "It is better, okay, to have a a sincere brother that only knows one scripture and apply it applies that scripture." Okay. Okay, that brother or that sister who only knows one scripture but applies that scripture, it's better than an Israelite who knows the whole Bible but doesn't even follow one commandment. Okay, so it's better to be, you know, sincere, devout. Okay, be devout in this truth and fully dedicated. Let me get one more scripture of what happens if you're not devout. This is Revelation 3 and 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy, out of my mouth. Yeah. So when you come into this truth, you can't be lukewarm. Okay. You gotta be all in, especially in these last days. Okay. In these last days, which is the last days of Esau's kingdom, you have to come super hot, man. That's why this is the year of the turnip, the year of amplification, man. Everything's turning up, the left side and the right hand side. And you brothers and sisters who are on the right hand side, which is the side of Yahweh by Shemal Shaman, you gotta be very hot in this truth. You gotta be dedicated. Okay? You gotta be a uh, uh, 144% convinced that this is the truth. You see that? And with that, you know, I pray this lesson was edifying. Again, the word of the day is devout, which is an Israelite who's deeply sincere and dedicated to the truth. And with that, I pray it was edifying.